Well, hi, everyone. I'm Colleen Benelli. This is the Reiki Lifestyle Podcast here with my daughter, Robin Benelli. Hello, everyone. Very excited for today. <laughs> oh, it's so good. We we have our guest, Rika Saruhashi, and she is in Spain, but from Japan. So welcome, Rika. Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me. Oh, we are just so excited for our conversation today. So what I am going to do, though, is start with the um, with the bio and how people can find you. So they they know they find us at Reiki Lifestyle and just find out about any of the classes we have, social media, all of those things are all on Reiki Lifestyle. But let's go ahead with introducing Rika. So Rika Saruhashi is a Japanese Reiki master who has lived in Spain for over three decades. She met Master Hiroshi Doi and other Japanese Reiki masters in 1999 on a trip she made to Japan to study the situation of Reiki in its country of origin. What she learned on that visit thrilled and moved her, although she had been helped and healed enormously by Reiki since she had first learned it in Spain in 1996, she finally felt she had found the missing piece and what she already knew. Since then, a series of events in her life have quickly led her to serve as an interpreter, translator, and organizer of international events to connect the West with Japan. Thank you. <laughs> and after completing her mission as one of the organizers of the historical centenary, centenary of Yusui Reiki Ryoho held in Osaka in April of 2023, while she keeps imparting all types of Reiki activities, she also spends her time translating and editing books on Reiki and Japanese culture. Reiki is her life and passion. So you can find Rika at Reiki dash Japones. So that is Reiki um, dash and J A P O N E S dot com. And then her social media is Rika dot Saruhashi on Facebook. And then Instagram is Saruhashi Rika. So um, you can also find her information in our show notes, and we will have it clearly there and probably stated also at the end so that um, people can find you. So also, we know that you have translated books and um, just so very interested in the most recent translation of Doi Sensei's book, and uh, that that will be coming out in English as well. We do have Spanish-speaking listeners for sure, mm -hmm. and uh, listeners from all around the world, uh, but I, I think our primary uh, mm -hmm. listeners are you know, English-speaking. So uh, we'll be really excited to have the book. And so what I'd like to do is just hear your story and then also, we do want to talk about uh, the book that you're translating. So let's go ahead and start with you, Rika, and just start with your story. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, my story, my story, my Reiki story. <laughs> yes. Um, Many people um, get surprised uh, when I say that uh, Reiki is not so popular in Japan like in the Western world, especially in the United States. Uh, Reiki is practiced by many people. And also we heard uh, from uh, one doctor and, and another person was a nurse in the centenary celebration, not their um, conference uh, on Reiki in hospitals in the United States. Uh, no? So uh, the things are very advanced there um, as to Reiki. Uh, meanwhile, in Japan, 
I always say maybe 95% of the Japanese population know the word Reiki. May, uh, no, don't know, excuse me, don't know the word Reiki. It means only 5%, maybe 5% is a, a lot. <laughs> maybe 1% or 2% of Japanese population know the word Reiki. And uh, the, the fact that uh, practice like Reiki exists and people get very surprised. But no. So I am one of those persons who got to know Reiki. Uh, I, I got to know in 1996, Doi-sensei in 1993, and many other people who know Reiki, uh, maybe at the end of 1980, maybe it started to... Uh, be known uh, between people in how do you say um, uh, people who practice or are interested in natural therapy, no complementary therapies and things like that. So um, I didn't know the word Reiki at very many years of my life because I started in 1996. Uh, I am 65 years old now. And uh, so it means like I got to know like at 36 or 37, I don't, I don't remember exactly, yeah, uh, like that. So I didn't even know the word Reiki. And I am not the only Japanese who, who, who didn't know the word Reiki then. Most of us didn't even know the word Reiki. And so I started to see in Spain an announcement in, uh, how do you say, in magazines, magazines, you know, natural therapy magazines and things like that, um, word Reiki announced. And I was like, what is this? It sounds like Japanese, but I, I don't know what this is. No. Uh, and uh, But my friends who started Reiki, Spanish friends, um, recommended me to go to a Reiki course. And I was like, Sounds very strange. I don't know if I should go, but um, as I trusted my friends, uh, almost 100%, not their very good friends from a long time ago. So I went and I was very sick then too. I have been sick from very young age uh, with kidney problem. So I was really sick and I, I, I wasn't living a normal life anymore. So I said, maybe I should try, you know, and, and I went and I found out, uh, you know, a little bit of a story. And uh, when I heard the story about Reiki, um, I think that the, the, most of us, most of Japanese uh, citizens would react like, oh, okay, it's Japanese, it's Japanese origin. But the story uh, that my master was telling me, telling me uh, was a little bit like I was smiling all the time because I really liked you know, how he presented it. And I was so happy that it was Japanese origin and things like that. But it sounded like, I don't know if you know, mm, no, Robin is very young. Maybe she doesn't know when they used to make uh, a film about Japan or when they uh, had like Japanese uh, characters in the movies, Hollywood movies, no, they were depicted in a very funny way, <laughs> very <laughs> wrong way many times. No? <laughs> it wasn't Japanese, <laughs> no, it was very strange. <laughs> But we laughed. We all went laughed. No, it's like um, there was well, no criticism. It was just like a smile on our face, saying, "Oh, oh, <laughs> they're doing their best." But well, <laughs> that's not it. But it's okay. No, it was like that. So the story yeah. I was listening to was like that, exactly like that. But it was it didn't it didn't matter at all for me. It's okay, not because it's typical. Uh, it has been um, passed on to um, no, um, Jap uh, from Japan. Japan. Uh, it it uh, originated in Japan, but it went to the United States first, Hawaii first, and then it, uh, how do you say, evolved during many decades 
in the Western world. So I, I thought it's, it's normal. But uh, what happened was, um, it was just incredible. It was just a very simple course, no, but it changed my life and it changed my health condition. I tried everything during many, many years. My parents do anything, any, any natural therapy, any alternative therapy, doctors, famous doctors, and anything, tried everything. No, but I wasn't not getting better. But with Reiki, just with two days of Reiki course, <laughs> I started to be strong. I started to uh, function almost like a normal person. No, normal means a uh, normal healthy person. And I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, and also I liked what I felt with the energy, you know, uh, and uh, was I just fell in love with Reiki. I forgot about my, how do you say, my doubts about Reiki. I forgot about my prejudice. It's prejudice that we have Japanese people towards word Reiki. I forgot about my prejudice. I, I just started to love Reiki. So that was in uh, 1996. And... Uh, uh, and also, I believed, like many Japanese people believe, that Reiki didn't exist in Japan anymore. I believe that story completely. And I thought that was true. So I was lucky that I could learn it in Spain. You know? And uh, Reiki is very popular in many countries, but not in Japan. But uh, I, was very, I felt very lucky and I was just happy. And my life changed. I became very active and everything. And three years passed. But uh, my master, Spanish master, uh, uh, found a book on Reiki uh, that started to talk about Reiki in Japan. And that finally they found out that Reiki existed in Japan. And Usui Reiki Ryoho Gakkai, the association founded by Mikao Sui in 1922. So we are already in second year of a uh, new century of Reiki, no, because 2022 was the centenary. No, but uh, no, it, it, this year is the, the second year already. It's incredible. So, um, so my master said, Rika, take me to Japan. <laughs> and also uh, my friend, uh, one of my friends that recommended me to go to Reiki, so he said to Rika, I'll help you. I'll help you economically. So go, let's go, let's go. So we went, we went in 1999. We just had to go. If there was Reiki in Japan, we had to go and find out a little bit more about Reiki. So as Colleen read in my bio, um, from then um, my Reiki life changed uh, completely. Um, of course, uh, the story I heard about Reiki uh, was not Japanese. Act. <laughs> no, <laughs> Japanese. Okay, okay. But finally, I heard story that I said, "Oh, this is Japanese. <laughs> this comes from Japanese mind and heart." No more than like Japanese sensibility, and oh, this sounds really Japanese. <laughs> so, and also, of course, um, you know, the teachings of Sui Sensei and all those you know, fascinating traditional techniques of Sui Sensei. And also, um, I fell in love with another aspect of Reiki. Uh, that is what Doi Sensei teaches, even though he is maybe one of the most important experts in traditional Reiki of Mikao Sui, he also teaches you know, uh, more contemporary, more updated uh, style of Reiki, Gendai Reiki Ho. 
I actually fell in love with Kendai Reiki yeah. so, Yes, I love traditional Reiki. Of course, I study, I keep on studying deeply what the Sisians they wanted to uh, transmit, you no, know, and the background um, of all that. I love it, but uh, I fell in love with um, um, Doi Sensei's um, way of thinking, you know, that everything must evolve. Now, Reiki also has, has to evolve, you no, know, because nowadays we use, uh, how do you say, in, 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 in the United States, I don't know if you say mobile phone or cellular phone. Yeah. Phone. Yes, no, yes. but 100 years ago, they didn't even have phone, or maybe they had a phone, but a very simple one. And now we you know we are evolving everything and spirituality too, and the practice like Reiki must evolve too. It's it's not natural, it's not normal not to evolve, no. Of course, valuing the, the origins and valuing the original techniques, um, we gain a lot you know, as Reiki practitioners, uh, but also we have to adapt you know, uh, to new way of doing things. And uh, that's why I liked it so much. I, 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 it just um, was, uh, it, 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 it's really, how do you say, uh, um, touched me because um uh, yeah you told me not to worry to talk too long and <laughs> I'm always <laughs> worried <laughs> it's our mind no it's terrible our mind <laughs> <laughs> so, yes Colleen and Robin told me I can talk all, all the while I want to but being a, a, a Japanese person even though I live in Spain and I lived in the United States too and also in the India uh, you know, for a long time um, but I'm, I'm Japanese <laughs> yes <Right. laughs> so um, okay so a little bit more a little bit more I will continue you know? so um and also, after getting to know Doisens and more masters, Japanese masters, um, I said to myself, this is not enough. I have to go back to Japan more times. And then I found out the next year there was a um, um, gathering, big gathering, international gathering no, in, in Kyoto. So I went, I went because I wanted to learn more. It, and then, then I got to know uh, very, you know, um, other uh, Western Reiki masters, you know. And also uh, that year in 1999, when we went for the first time, we were invited uh, to a meeting called Reiki Oneness, uh, Congress of Reiki Oneness. Uh, it was uh, Japanese masters of all lines, all types of school, got together to share. So from then on, even though I had been a Genda Reiki student, I really liked Genda Reiki. I fell in love with uh, how Doi Sensei you know, um, teaches and what he transmits and his sensitivity too. But uh, from 1999, uh, I got involved in uh, this uh, thinking of Reiki as one. And I'm, of course, I'm totally convinced with that idea. You know? So I have been working on that since then too. Uh, meanwhile, I have been a Gendareki student. I'm a Gendareki student. You know? I'm learning from this method, but I have been uh, in touch with uh, people of uh, no other lines of Reiki. That's why we also could celebrate in 2023, uh, not last year, gathering also, um, practitioners of all types of tendency and lines of Reiki in Osaka. Yes, uh, so that that's my story. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, and I was so fortunate, and I know I only met you for a moment at yeah. at the convention last year in Osaka. Um, it was just beautiful to see people from around the world, yes. all the different lineages, 
And one of the things that we talk so much about in this evolution of Reiki is this unity. And I really believe that that was Yusui's intention from the very beginning and his very first decision to share Reiki with the world and to teach it to others. And so that's the gift. And Doi Sensei, as you say, has played such a crucial role in uh, in the development and evolution of Reiki. I can tell you for myself, when I was originally trained with Reiki in 2000, I also was trained with that old history and uh, very, very strict rules and a lot of the one right way to practice Reiki. And if you're not doing it like that, you're doing it wrong. And so really the change for me after uh, hearing the evidence-based history of Reiki when Mm -hmm. I studied with William Rand in 2003, because of Doi Sensei's work, Mm -hmm. it opened Reiki for me in a way that felt true in a sense of my inner awareness, inner intuition, inner truth finally opened it to these new possibilities of practice and so he he brought doi sensei brought such a gift to the world and to reiki by providing the history and the evidence-based history and that we can build on today to even know more and more is is being uncovered but like you say back when i first learned reiki it was not well known in japan at all and you know even really even here but uh in the states but um that's what i believe his work really opened it up because you know mrs takata was a tremendous innovator and because of her we have reiki in the world and i know later with the the study of the history that I've done even about her, a lot of the things that I learned in 2000 really didn't even come from her. They -hmm. were after her. And some of those rules were not rules Mm -hmm. that she established, but Mm -hmm. happened somewhere along the way. So I felt like Doi Sensei's evidence-based history of Reiki just opened, opened the possibilities in in all new ways. And so, um, you know, if you want to go ahead and even share your journey with Mm -hmm. Gendai Reiki Hone with him and where that has taken you from then, you know, going through till now. And we, what Rico was laughing about is before we started the podcast, we said, you know, if you are still talking, keep talking because everybody wants to hear from you. And, um, and so, you know, as she said, that's not really typical in Japanese culture. <laughs> so, yeah, go yeah. ahead and go from here. <laughs> yeah, Rick, I want to hear now from that time in the early 2000s yeah. to now where you're at and that relationship developing between you and Doi Sensei. Yes. So, but first, um, you talked about that a very rigid way uh, working in no, uh, after Takata Sensei, it's very it's a very funny story, and Doi Sensei is very very flexible. <laughs> Doi Sensei is a free spirit, <laughs> yeah. and uh, a typical contemporary Japanese person, because um. Meanwhile, in the Western world or rest of the world, um, they still have a uh, image of Japan, uh, old Japan, no, like very disciplined, very rigid, no, uh, Japan. But um, after the the post World War II, Japan has Westernized a lot. Our way of being uh, has changed a lot. And most of the person, uh, there are also liberal persons, 
um, also intellectual and liberal persons are very, very flexible. Uh, they even a little bit um, uh, reject you know, the old rigid culture. So uh, they're very flexible person. But Doi Sensei is, is very flexible. He, has, he, he does his work very well. He investigates uh, very, very seriously. What, what he does, he does it seriously. But when he teaches, he's always like, oh, oh, you guys worry too much about details. Don't worry about them. You just do the way you feel like you, you know, you feel like if you feel good, if you feel relaxed, it's okay. Especially to me. <laughs> See, he tells me that. I'm like, don't you say, please answer to my question. Please tell me how to do this, how to do that. Say, ah, forget about it. <laughs> so it's, it's a little bit, contra how do you say, it's a contradiction you know, that um, there are no between the ideas people have outside of Japan of us and how we are you know, uh, in contemporary Japan. Even though uh, we are starting, I think, I see you know, in Japan that we're starting to discover that we have beautiful culture, you know, and uh, very old culture, uh, tradition, old tradition, Japanese traditions are really exceptional. And we have been discarding them, you know, um, and we have been even feeling a little bit of shame, you know, of um, practicing them. And we, it's like, uh, you, you see that in Japan too, you know, people wanting to become like a Western person, you know, uh, Westernized, very Westernized too, you know. So, but we're starting to find out Maybe that is not the way. Of course, we have to learn from Western world. Um, in Western world, there are lots of things, no positive things that we have to learn from. Um, but also, we shouldn't forget our you know, old tradition and our old culture. And I, I am one of those persons um, starting to find out so many uh, positive things about Japanese old culture and traditions. That's why I also, I also want to present all those aspects you not know, to the western world um, and also uh, to let know, you know the western world we have been lost for some decades yes uh, we have been influenced by western culture very much uh, and uh, uh, of course because we love it <laughs> that's right too you no know? uh, no so um, but we should have maintained the balance, maybe. You know, in, and also, that's why, like in the Reiki Ho, it's the balance of both things. No? Um, in Gendai Reiki Ho, um, there's a part in which uh, Doi Sensei uh, learned from Western Reiki you know, and updated what is a traditional Reiki. And there's another part in which Doi Sensei uh, teaches uh, traditional Reiki in a very pure way uh, with our uh, no, uh, good teachings, trying to transmit uh, original teachings of uh, Usui Sensei, and of course, all the uh, wonderful techniques no, and very effective techniques that uh, they developed during you know, four years of Usui Sensei's activity. No, uh, after, uh, how do you say, uh, he reached the maximum stage of Anshin, it's May. No? So, um, yes, <laughs> about the, the, the Gendai Reiki and its development. And also, there's another story I tell uh, people, and people get very surprised too. Um, there's a moment in which I felt very. Um, I got uh, deception from Doi Sensei from just uh, uh, one thing that happened. And um, I wasn't uh, in touch with Doi Sensei for like three years, during three years, but that was a long time ago. But I loved Gendai Reiki, so I kept on, uh, 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 how do you say, practicing Gendai Reiki, teaching Gendai Reiki. But after that, we got closer.
uh, even close now, and we are very close uh, as person, as a master and student. You no. Know? And um, I'm very lucky because uh, um, he's so willing to help us you know, understand this, uh, uh, all, all, all that he's transmitting and all the teachings of Sui Sensei. And every time we ask him something, uh, he responds. He responds to like um, maybe 200, 300 meals in a week. But he does, he does, and I'm so grateful that he does, you know. Um, so um, we became very close, and of course, um, I've been, I have been working very closely with Doi Sensei, yeah, from a from long time ago now. Um, but um, it's one of the, the best lessons uh, in my life that I had, uh, because uh, I wasn't well with Doi Sensei, but when we overcame it, you know, uh, we become a real, how do you say, um, my friends not, is not the word because he's an older person. He's also a person with more knowledge than I. But uh, he doesn't like the word master uh, and disciple. He doesn't like. He doesn't like. He doesn't want to uh, understand you know, the relationship with his students as disciple. Uh, he says, uh, we are all companions, no, on the same path, no, same path of light, no, so, um, so it, it's like, uh, really, I had a very um, important uh, life lesson with uh, this uh, problem I had with Doi Sensei, but we overcame it and we became very close now. So, um, and I, I really feel you now a breath that uh, I have a, a master who is willing always to um, clarify things, not the doubts we have, the questions we have. And so, uh, uh, and also, uh, I think he does that because uh, he releases in horizontal uh, relationship, you know, and he does want to have uh, any uh, successor. He doesn't want to designate any successor. He says each one of you is not, uh, all of you are my successors. So that's why I think he wants to you know, have people well trained, uh, people with good knowledge. So he helps us you know, in anything he could. So this is you not know, like a story a little bit of me and uh, Gendai Reiki world. It's a very different world <laughs> from maybe many other Reiki communities, you know. Um, so. <laughs> well, and I, I love that about him, um, that he views it that way. So I think a lot of times in years prior to this with Reiki and, and you know, in the maybe 1800, um, 1980s and that, that time frame with there being the, um, the head of it all or the guru or the yeah. authority. And that's also in my experience of Doi Sensei is that he is not taking that role mm -hmm. other than he can share with us the knowledge that he has, that he has been able to, you know, obtain and receive. I did get to meet him in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, William Rand interviewed him. My husband and I had traveled mm -hmm. to Japan and uh, Fumi Koji also, mm -hmm. we did the interview. I was I was the camera person, um, <laughs> but we got to go out to, to lunch with him and that same thing, the really uh, big generosity of sharing and generosity of, you know, he was he was showing me different ways that Yusui Sensei had done uh, reju's or attunements, and you know, just again that that generosity of sharing. Yes, I did get to learn uh, Gendai Reiki Ho maybe back in two thousand six here in America. Mm -hmm. Um, from another teacher, um, not directly from Doi Sensei, but I had 
had been able to receive some of that training and um, from another teacher that he trained. Um, so I, I got to experience that. Would would you like to share more about Gendai Reiki Ho and how that is that blend of the the Japanese and the Western Reiki and uh, and what how that works for you and your teachings and mm -hmm. you know just share about about the traditions lineage and the you know what Gendai Reiki Ho is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... Maybe I'm not the best person who can talk about Genta Rikiho because I'm not a very typical person. <laughs> I'm not a very <laughs> typical <laughs> Reiki master. No. Um, and, uh, I just love Genta Rikiho. I just respect it. And even though I'm very uh, free person, and many times very crazy person, um, but uh, I try to teach it as faithful as possible. Of course, telling my student when you practice on on your own, you are so free free to do everything you like, and that's why that's how I do too. You know, in my daily life too, um, that is why I like this method. And also, Gendai Reiki Ho is very unique. That's why I fell in love with Gendai Reiki Ho. Um, because it has a lot of uh, what we call a uh, technique of self purification or self cleansing and a self uh, development or self growth. No? That comes from Hatsurei Ho of Usi Sensei. Now, Usi Sensei uh, developed Hatsurei Ho, it's a series of uh, exercises at work, no speech at work, uh, that you do at Hatsurei Ho. And also, when you do it in a group, not a group session, uh, it's called Shuyo Ho. You know, it's guided by Tu Shihan. You know? And um, when you do it on your own, only your Okuden students or, or superior can, could do it on their own. I can do it on their own because they still continue as Isiriki Ho Gakkai. So, um, Going back to Usi Sensei, to the origin, of course, um, Usi Sensei uh, started with the idea of uh, achievement, no, uh, transmitting no vibration or energy, no, uh, and uh, getting people no, uh, to um, use no, uh, universal energy in a very effective way, in a very, very simple way, and people could do it immediately. No, that. Um, but of course you are tuned. You no, know, you are given you but you have to develop you know, as a person. No, the system they used to say your internal reiki. You no, know, it means your inner energy or internal energy. You no, know, like uh, your emotions, uh, your feelings, your think, uh, your thoughts, no, or more, uh, and the deeper places, they are not uh, inner energy, not that are interfering, you know, us to uh, be able to, uh, how do you say, be able to, be, uh, be able to be <laughs> at peace, uh, no, uh, to maintain your mind, you uh, uh, no, uh, uh, at peace and, uh, so that, that's your internal energy, no? Because it's so many times like so. So he, no, um, Usi Sensei uh, uh, started with the idea of Hatsurei Ho, Oshu Yo Ho. No, that is the purification of your internal energy. And also there's ratio involved. So from, no, uh, also you, you receive external purification. And, but uh, the idea is uh, self purification and self growth. You know? So you know, in Hatsureiho and Chuyoho, you have some um, tools to be able to raise your awareness and also to uh, purify or cleanse your internal energy. But um, Usi Sensei you not know, only developed uh, Hatsureiho or you Chuyoho, know, maybe because he had only uh, four years four years, no, because he was only active four years. But after that, uh, Hiroshi Doi came to this world. 
<laughs> no, and uh, he, in certain way, he inherited you know, what else he said they wanted to transmit. So he also thought could develop more types of uh, self purification and self growth techniques. And in Gendai Kiho, we have many. So uh, for me, that was the value uh, Gendai Reiki as a method of Reiki. Uh, no, uh, uh, has no because uh, uh, I have been very, very, um, how do you say? Um, it's it's like uh, 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 sometimes the no, people laugh no at me like I'm just a little bit like addicted to no, these kind of techniques. Right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> See? And so um, I love them. I just love them. No, I mean. I'm always practicing you know, self purification and self growth techniques of um, gender radical, and uh, it helps a lot because it, um, if your inner state is good, if you're feeling your inner energy light, you no, know, and refreshed. And not very heavy, and you're feeling like you know very like down, or you have lots of uh, emotional block, no block, bl block or blockage. I don't know how to say that. Yes, uh, or maybe you have even deeper things, no. Um, and in, even if you are accumulating them each day, no, it's like you never have a uh, peace because uh, you always resonate with uh, external influences. Now, if you are heavy inside, uh, if some uh, heavy wave comes to you in uh, one way or others, you get perturbed because there's a resonance between very heavy waves. You know? So uh, it becomes, the sensation becomes stronger inside you and you lose your calmness and you lose your harmony, inner harmony too. But if you're always light, if you're always clean, not 100%, but um, the impact you know, that has you know, the things that come from uh, outside is like, a, a very very um I would say smooth you know it doesn't impact you like this you no know, it's like oh, you feel it you feel it of, of course but it's so light that maybe also sometimes it goes like this with a big, big impact because you you have a, in that moment no things that are not um resolved that, that, uh, within you so you can resonate with what comes from outside but also thanks to you no know, uh, reiki and i think it happens to everybody and we have a lot of clarity in our mind you now also uh, no uh, so it's like we are more aware of all that and also we know that uh, the energy must be moving actively to be clean and light so uh, we just, with uh, this kind of exercise, you have like a automatic you know, a reaction of uh, quickly uh, being aware and also to let go uh, quickly. And if, if it doesn't go quickly, uh, we just accept it. No, we, just, we don't reject it. We just accept that. No, maybe we are feeling bad during a while, but we accept that. And then when we accept that, uh, it also goes away a lot more quicker. So I feel in love with this kind of um, exercises because um, as a person, I never felt uh, adapted in this world. So my problem was very, very emotional. No, it was a lot more, uh, how they say, internal than uh, not external. No? So I started to feel very well as a person. I started to be very constructive, very creative, and also to be able to live the life you know, with a lot of awareness and feeling good inside. It's just a, it's just happiness, the best happiness. Right. It's kind of everything. <laughs> yes, 
that, that's that's the the teachings of the sensei, you know, the to seek the the true happiness, and he he, he taught that a state of uh, unshin may is the key to that happiness. See, uh, so yeah, it, it all the, it all has to do with unshin bitsume. To be uh, feeling light, feeling good inside means uh, you are in state of unshin because you don't resonate not with what you can, what make you, what can make you uh, lose, you know, uh, that harmony, internal harmony, that internal peace. So <laughs> that's a little bit of how Genda Reiki is. One of the best characters of Genda Reiki is uh, our, our characters, character of Genda Reiki is uh, all those exercises. Uh, we have, but that's me. Yeah, that's me because my personal uh, experience has been a little bit hard because I did I never felt adapted to this world. So this kind of work made me feel um, uh, better and also made me uh, develop, you now grow as a person. So that's. For me and my students, my students all contaminated by me. So, so, <laughs> so Rika, the 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 tools and exercises for self purification are is that kind of the idea of of blending some of the modern um, concepts to achieve some of the the states that. Asui Sensei was talking about, and that's that blend that you're you're talking about. Yes, of course, because uh, what um, Doi Sensei developed as uh, self purification techniques uh, based on Hatsune Ho Sui Sensei, but Doi Sensei incorporated um, more modern or contemporary uh, techniques or uh, tools. Yes like working chakras and uh, like uh, using uh, a type of uh, breathing technique or so and uh, things like that. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. Yes. Yeah, the actual techniques mm -hmm. and the, the tools. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. It's such a life management um, energy and techniques that, that help us get to that place of Anshin Ditsume, where I know for myself, you know, I, of course, as you were describing, you know, sometimes you run into those challenges and they're, they're hard in that moment. Mm -hmm. And then the Reiki energy can come in and clarify, balance, mm -hmm. and bring us to solution, mm -hmm. peace, Maybe maybe there isn't a solution. Maybe the solution mm -hmm. is just the inner peace, um, and how the energy does that for us. For me, it's I I just wrote an article. I think it was last year called Reiki uh, for light for mind management, mm -hmm. and I feel like that's that's like for me one of the number one ways yeah. that it enhances my life is by bringing my mind to a state of peace, clarity, balance. And, you know, I'm, I'm like you say, not 100% because I'm still a human being living on earth. And so I still have those. But, you know, we were talking about that earlier today about how Reiki just helps us navigate mm -hmm. through life and through everything between the challenges, but also those empowerments, like you said about yourself, that it mm -hmm. helped you be more creative and, and, you know, like wanting to be up and active mm -hmm. and healthy and, you know, mm -hmm. in mind as well as body. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But that's a really, um, 
something that uh, that is common in uh, it doesn't matter with who you study you know, in which school you studied uh, if you are reiki practitioners and if you practice reiki with sincerity and of course with love it happens to everybody not only to gendai reiki students it's, it doesn't matter which technique tools you use it's it's just the connection with Reiki, no? that gives us all that. That's why I, I, I believe in Reiki oneness. It's, it's like, it doesn't matter, actually. <laughs> For me, it's not so, I talked about Genda Reiki, but it's just, they are just tools. No? Like, Doi Sensei always say, they are just tools. No? Yeah. <laughs> you use them until you need them, but they are not the essence here. No, and that's what Usui Sensei also used to say. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that, that brings us also so to the history of Reiki mm -hmm. that you know you had sent us information mm -hmm. and then of course more information about the book that uh it says by Hiroshi Doi and Rika Saruhashi. Gendai Reiki Ho, the spirit of Yusui Sensei and the truth about traditional Reiki. And you you talked about, you know, in our discussion prior to the podcast, the history that you know, and I would love for you to share about that. And then also some curiosity about the symbols of mm -hmm. Reiki, because of as we know, those the information and research on those is changing too. Mm -hmm. Yes, I start uh, first with uh, symbols because we talked about the tools, no, and also mm -hmm. uh, what Usi Sensei uh, said about the tools, no, yes, yes, and um, it was actually in 2015 when Doi Sensei gave a traditional Reiki workshop here in Madrid, Spain, and uh, he doesn't give uh, traditional Reiki uh, in any seminar or anything, but he made a exception that time because he wanted uh, everybody to um, uh, learn well what is uh, traditional Reiki. So he offered it for not many people, from also from many countries here in Spain. And he, he told us this. It was like a shock not to... To everybody, you know. Yeah. Um, we always think that I thought too until then. Uh, Su Sensei gave four symbols. Now, four means uh, not a, a three in Okuden, in and and uh, four, there's a fourth symbol, you no, know, uh, for people in the advanced level, maximum level, you no, know, and uh, that's what. I, I and everybody used to think, no, there, there are false symbols, no, in the uh, Reiki. Um, but as the Doi Sensei said, um, the only symbol Zi Sensei gave to his student was uh, the distance, distant symbol. So you know what it is, no? And so and in Japan, it's very strict. Yes. Uh, they they uh, tell us not to mention uh, the, the form the, that has symbol, how is symbol, or you no? Know? Uh, so can, I can't say kotodama either. <laughs> it's we, either. we honor that too. <laughs> yes, the absentee symbol or distant symbol, you no? Know? So that's the only one because um, his student, his Okuden student, who had to learn to send energy distant uh, using distant healing, um, uh, complained that uh, that is very difficult for them. So they, they were not prepared. Yes, for that. Yes. So Usi Sensei said, okay, I'll give you this tool. You can use it, but raise your consciousness, raise your level of consciousness as quickly as you can, not to depend on this kind of tool. Yes, mm -hmm. so that was uh, what Usi Sensei said uh, according to 
da ist ja ein Fall. Ja. <lacht> so, um, mhm. Also, ja, that is the story. And after, as uh, we say, in the time of second president, they cooperated uh, two other symbols. One of the symbol is, uh, how do you say, a power symbol. Do you understand? Uh, yes. Symbol? The yes. power symbol and the mental oh, emotional yes. symbol. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, those two know what that. And power symbol was incorporated because um, people who were starting, you know, um, they, uh, they couldn't know. Um, it, 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 Musui Reiki is not the matter of result. Oh, no, you, if you want to uh, improve you know, your result, because it's Reiki, it does not uh, that work. You no, know? but you have to uh, cleanse yourself, you have to develop yourself to uh, resonate with Reiki. You no, know, Reiki is high vibration each time. So you work for that. You work to cleanse yourself, to develop yourself. But that doesn't mean that you make your mind strong to get a quicker result or things like that. No, uh, you don't manipulate anything. But they decided to give a symbol that can please a little bit people who are a little bit behind. So giving power symbol, <laughs> you know, they could accelerate the process of healing. So that's one of the leads. And uh, as to the second symbol, uh, uh, not emotional, how do you say it? Uh, uh, harmony, no symbol. Or harmony symbol, symbol, yes. Yes. Um, it was a symbol used for one of the techniques of uh, Usi Sensei. Seiheki uh, Chiryoho is a transmission to subconscious mind to change your habits, to change, to, to improve your character, and also to get rid of, uh, uh, how do you say, negative uh, customs, you know, like addictions and things like that. It's called Seiheki Chiryoho, yes, uh, because Seiheki means uh, kind of a uh, habit not we have as person or no it's like uh, a little bit also talking about addiction no say heki no? so, and uh but uh, the second symbol uh was used for uh that uh, in this technique uh, yes especially for this technique yes but we all know the origin it's i think worldwide uh was revealed and many people uh, in the world, know that, that that comes from a uh, Sanskrit letter, no, Kirik, it's called Kirik, and it's uh, just a Sanskrit letter that Buddhists use. So you can also see it in some temples of Japan as something normal that is in temple, yes. But yes. it's an uh, energy of compassion. So you know, it's a, a subtle and invisible energy that can work. You no, know? but it's uh, you know, something that is more internal than external. You know? So, uh, so that that's the second symbol. <laughs> yes. No. Mm -hmm. uh, as to the fourth symbol, um, don't you say or well, nobody knows actually who started to use it but the the the, the most uh, the, the strongest uh, theory is uh, hayashi sensei uh, converted to symbol to uh, uh, give it to uh, takata sensei to transmit mm -hmm. to takata sensei the idea of uh, usui sensei was this usui sensei this is very interesting. I don't. It, it it doesn't matter to talk about this. No, uh, this is just a calligraphy and a contemporary calligraphy. No, it's a daikomyo, and it doesn't matter that I say because daikomyo also is a Buddhist term. That I don't. You also see these letters. No, uh, in Buddhist temples, and it means no. Uh, according to the the the, the uh, Buddhist school, uh, the meaning uh, differs a little bit, but it's talking about pure light, 
no, that emanates from Buddhas and things like that. It's a pure light. It's talking about pure light. No, and that. See, I know. So, Use Sensei used to show these letters. No, Use Sensei used to talk about this term, Daikomyo, Buddhist term, and used to say to his student, No, you have to, um, how, did he, how do you say? Uh, you have to become as bright no, as the this pure light to reach to many people. It means that your light, no bright might reach more people to many people. So it was a, a, a term that Uzi Sensei used to show to his Shimpiden student, uh, reminding them their work now is not to improve their um treatment or healing techniques or healing uh, work uh, your work is now to uh, heighten your awareness your consciousness raise your consciousness level and become a bright light you know, light that can touch the hearts of many people that's how it was used but uh uh senses think that uh, Hayashi Sensei converted it to a symbol, the Reiki symbol for uh, Takata Sensei. So it was easier for Takata Sensei to assimilate you know, this vibration and also all the information that contains this uh, Buddhist uh, term that is very important. You know? uh, it has been used for many centuries as you know, reference for Buddhist people. And it has very, a big power. You no, know, it has a very high vibration and lots of uh, information as vibration. So uh, Hayashi Sensei thought just transmitting it, you no, know, uh, through achievement to Takata Sensei. Takata Sensei, you no, know, it could intuitively uh, comprehend you no know, all the information that contains this uh, symbol, uh, the vibration of uh, symbol, no, vibration of these letters, no? So uh, from that, uh, we think it converted to uh, the fourth symbols that uh, uh, people use in the Western Reiki. So, so it's, a, it's all about the symbols, yes. But in Kendai Reiki, we use all four because Doi Sensei says, um, they don't value symbols because they haven't uh, even used them for now for a long time. They just show them to people who get to the Okuden, the Okuden Koki, the second part of Okuden. And they have to memorize them. Oh, I'm sorry, Okuden, get to Okuden because, see, uh, uh, yeah. Okuden, no, it's like a second level of uh, no Western Reiki, uh, and they Doisen says that he had to memorize them. I'm oh, sorry, I had to do this right. Um, uh, but um, I, I actually they don't use them. <laughs> he had to use them. See, he tells me that when he had to learn them in his Okuden lesson. Uh, his master told him, ah, oh, they used to use such things uh, a long time ago. <laughs> that is the, uh, the idea they have about uh, symbols. That's what Doi Sensei told me. Uh, so uh, I, I don't know actually how no, most of the Sureki uh, Ryoho Gakkai feels feel about this, but uh, that is the uh, experience of Doi Sensei when he received uh, traditional Reiki symbols. So he decided to use um, contemporary modern Western uh, symbols. I mean, uh, symbols that were uh, uh, expanded no, uh, from Takata Sensei in the Western world because those senses that um, symbols and also kotodama or mantras um, acquired um, a big power um, when more and more people use them with, uh, how do you say, with uh, belief, no? 
and also with uh, uh, confidence. So it's like millions of millions now here, I think, millions of uh, practitioners of Reiki have been using these symbols. So they have a very good effectiveness as symbols and kotodamas. So Doisen says said, uh, why not use something that are more useful, uh, more effective, you no, know? um, and also uh, as symbols and kotodama. This is my opinion. Um, more people, each even more people are using these symbols and kotodamas. That means uh, its power, its force. Uh, no, getting a uh, lot stronger, 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 and uh, well, stronger maybe is not the whole effect. Effect, no. So, so uh, uh, why not? And uh, I have been also using all these four symbols. So why not? No. Yeah. So that that is a little bit of development about the symbols. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that because. Uh, from my understanding, and I knew about Daikomio from years ago and Doi Sensei originally bringing that teaching to the to the West and the understanding of it, and that we we don't know the exact origin of where it came from as a person using it and giving uh, receiving my attunements to it. It, it absolutely has that effect and result. And like you say, there's an efficiency to it. There's another piece of it for, for us here that we are, for myself anyway, just learning about the awareness that, mm -hmm. uh, that the power symbol and the mental emotional or harmony symbol were actually developed by the second president um, and I, I'm always afraid I'll say his name incorrectly, Ushida Jirabozo, Boro. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I, I, no, it's okay. Jirabuzo. I don't mean to be disrespectful and not have No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that I think is fairly new information, at mm -hmm. least um, in the circles that mm -hmm. I'm in. And so... Can you just talk a little bit more about that? Um, and mm -hmm. Doi Sensei, I know he wrote about it in the book that the two of you wrote together. Um, and maybe share a little bit about that book in mm -hmm. in that topic too. See, yeah, uh, the book is just translated by me. I just wrote the introduction, and I also wrote the footnotes because uh, Doi Sensei. Uh, is busy and for his old age, he couldn't change all the text, so he couldn't update all the text. So I put as footnote all these uh, remarks about the symbols. Of course, uh, it's him uh, not, uh, that told me uh, not all this information. Um, as to the first and second symbol, um, well, that it doesn't talk about how no uh, the, it uh, how they came to be and anything. Just he just says that it was in the time of uh, Juzaburo Ushida. He doesn't specify it was Juzaburo Ushida or not, uh, because um, Sireki Yoho Gakkai, all that was developed in the time of Usui Sensei. It wasn't just Usui Sensei. It was also Usui Sensei and his collaborators because Usui Sensei had uh, from the beginning very highly spiritual people, people with a lot of knowledge. So uh, he had collaborators who helped him you know, develop a techniques, develop a structure, you not know, a teaching structure. You no. Know? And so uh, we don't actually know. The Doi Sensei doesn't mention who incorporated uh, those two symbols. Yeah. So we say incorporated because nobody channeled them. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> they took from what uh, what was uh, how this, what existed already. Yes. They of course uh, changed a little bit the form and everything. Not to make them symbols, but uh, yeah, 
It's interesting to think about the concept of the the distance symbol being mm-hmm. symbol that then those were kind of extrapolated from. Mm-hmm. I know we use them all together and that they have different qualities. And then at the same time, it's interesting to think of the distance symbol of cont- also containing them, yeah. that it's, it's, it's all of it, but it, that it contains those that then you can kind of bring those qualities mm-hmm. out into these um, and to the first two symbols or what we think of as the first two symbols. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe for this essay, only the distance symbol was enough, enough yeah. <laughs> for everything. Yeah. Well, this essay didn't need any symbol not to be able to because his uh, consciousness was in the highest level. So uh, I always explain you know, what. Why there's a difficulty of uh, sending energy, no distance, in 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 a distance, no? Because um, um, she said they, uh, his vibration was extremely high, and the energy he could project was extremely light, subtle. There was no weight, no, <laughs> there was no weight. No? So it transcended the distance of space no, easily. But our mind, our psychic energy, our inner energy is not light, as like all the seasons say. So we needed, ah, uh, we need, you know, uh, uh, how do you say, um, a tool to, you no, know, um, make Reiki, you know, that we absorb, you know, and also project, um, uh, we have to attune it, you not know, with high vibration of uh, this symbol, and uh, make, you know, what we project as Reiki a uh, lot more lighter, so like an uh, invisible weight, you know, that are uh, everywhere, you no, know, it can transcend uh, the space easily, you know. So mm, that's the reason, sister said, elevate your consciousness, uh, you no, know, heighten your consciousness as quickly as possible, not to depend on you know, this tool. But it doesn't happen so quickly. Yeah, that's really true. <laughs> you can do it, Asuri Sensei, but we need some help. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, you think of just his capacity to hold the power to have studied all of his life the way he did, be in the Zen training for three years, and then a 21-day meditation, that is a tremendous level of ability to hold the power to even do that. I've I've done many vision quests for four days, which is... I, that's plenty but 21 days just to think of his ability even at that point before he received the great reiki light yeah no really um because um i think um you know, people like Doi Sensei or, or i myself we are very cautious you no know, and we don't want to say much when we are not sure yeah. But of course, uh, Usui Sensei, uh, before then, during many years of his life, he trained. He trained very hardly, severely. <laughs> no. uh, we can imagine how to, but uh, the, the, he was a very extremely wise man because he didn't demand that to us. He didn't ask his student to pass for all these years of hard not discipline and um, he gave thank you <laughs> he facilitated you no know, uh, that kind of process to the the humanity you no know, thanks to see sensei uh you no know, uh, we can um use you no know, the the universal energy you know uh, in a such an effective way. And uh, before Sui Sensei, that took uh, many years of trainings, hard trainings, and many couldn't get to the level uh, where Sui Sensei got to. Maybe most of the persons who trained couldn't get to the level where Sui Sensei got to. But Sui Sensei never asked his student to do the same. But other masters, traditional masters, no, they Yes, never uh, survived 
because I think they just kept on asking, oh, go to the Mount Grama or any mountain and do your hard trainings for many years. And then maybe you can get this you know, uh, ability or what, whatever it is. But Sui Sensei, then uh, come to my, my, my Shui Yokai. I give you a ratio. Okay, ready. But, <laughs> but you have to cleanse yourself. You have to, you know, uh, develop your consciousness, heighten your awareness, you know, during all your life. <laughs> but from the first moment that we all, you know, uh, remember, it's just uh, remember, you know, it's uh, reactivate, you know, uh, um, in us, you know, something that has not been you know used by us you no know? uh, so we have been like a radio you no know? uh, like uh, it's like uh, I never it never occurred to me to listen to um how do you say in in case of English uh radio Reiki no? it was like there was a, a station radio station called radio Reiki no, it's like uh, I never thought all my life, you know, being myself a radio, you know, uh, to uh, adjust the, the frequency or vibration to listen to radio Reiki. But uh, no, Sui Sensei or somebody, no, attune us. That's why attune, <laughs> no, us to be able to catch, you know, that uh, frequency or the vibration. So we can receive you know, that sound, in this case, energy and universal energy, in a more pure state. You know? And then uh, that uh, energy, universal energy, uh, that we absorb in uh, a pure state uh, contains uh, universal intelligence, universal wisdom. So it can work in us. You no, know? It's just that. It's like all our lives, we had that you know, in us. No, but we never thought of oh, uh, attuning to listen to the, 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 the radio Reiki. No? And uh, uh, thanks to some kind of incident in our life or destiny or whatever, uh, we started with Reiki. <laughs> we started to listen to uh, uh, no? uh, um, very... Uh, Present uh, sound. It, uh, maybe in the beginning there was a little bit of, or, or many interference, noises, and everything. But with our work, no, there are uh, each time less noises, less interference, and we're getting to receive a very clear sound you know, that makes us uh, feel better. Uh, that makes that makes us how do you say that uh, that um, how do you say uh, that help us, help us you know, that helps us uh, uh, raise our uh, heighten our awareness and everything and also to heal us of course to heal us you know, so I think that's the story of Usui Reiki for me uh, for me you know? mm -hmm. and also the sensei talks about that too you know, a little bit you know? well I think it's part of the possible reason I should say that it is able to spread so effectively mm -hmm. because especially in the western culture you mm -hmm. might hear of something you know you i know for me i'm probably going to be of the mind that something's a lot more attainable mm -hmm. i have you know the attunement the symbol rather than the only way i can attain it is through the severe mm -hmm. hard work like you talked about that sui sensei did and you still have to have the discipline and like you said, grow in your consciousness, things like that. But um, that idea I think is also really helpful when we're talking about the growth in a, a Western culture specifically. Yes. Yes. Really. Um, well, Sui Sensei and Sui Reiki is um, something that started in modern time, not at the beginning of modern time time and I think we all needed that you know, that kind of evolution mm -hmm. instead of sticking to old ideas there the old idea was not very very healthy you know, it was like a, a very rigid very hard you know, very demanding so very few people could 
get you know, some kind of um, uh, you know, um, result, no special result. Um, but now everybody who's interested can, you know, and, uh, and also we can also heal ourselves and heal others. So in that sense, uh, Sui Sensei was very really a, a great man and extremely wise man. Yes, and uh, he broke from the old uh, way of doing things. No. So. Well, it, it's so to me. It's so current, even though we think of it a hundred years ago. And mm -hmm. and what a what an amazing um, just. Uh, awareness on his part and wisdom on his part and I think of it today as so much of where I think the energies what whatever a person believes they come from what the source of it is or definition of it is that Reiki is really trying to teach us that it's it it doesn't have to be such hard work that we have access to it in our ordinary lives. And, and like you said, you know, the majority of people do not have the ability, the time or the resources mm -hmm. to be off studying their personal inner development at the level that Reiki gives us innately that, that tuning into the radio, as you, as you say, and, um, I think in today's world, it it's it's so it's so amazing that it, we think of a hundred years ago, and of course that wasn't that long ago in the big picture. But the innovation to start this tradition of our own personal direct connection to it, how it resonates with each of us, how it helps us grow and develop individually, uniquely, and then collectively, because that is one of the things we really see in the Reiki community mm -hmm. is it it is there is community building. And now that we have these abilities to connect with each other through technology, we're mm -hmm. really seeing this community building which was what I think your intention last year for the the Reiki conference in Osaka, uh, yeah. the hundred years. It was not only a celebration, but it was also a bringing together of mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, realmente, uh, realmente, really. Um, um, the COVID crisis, I think, was very hard, and of course, you no, know, we are so sorry for people who lost their you know, uh, loved ones. Um, but um, it changed us in a positive way, you no, know, mm -hmm. because uh, we started to connect online. Yeah. Not uh, when the COVID crisis started, and we started to practice online. And we felt clearly there is a connection. You now, when we work together online, we feel really that there is uh, no, um, how do you say, it's, it's like we're connecting really, you no, know, at energy vibrational level. No, and um, this is also the new way of working that Busi Sensei never imagined that it was going to you know, happen like that. But um, this is uh, also a new way of uh, working and also, yes, the big community, international community is uh, uh, starting you know, from the time of COVID. It's, it's, Thanks to that, that we could connect with many people of the world, and um, many of us uh, already know each other from online session, and we got to meet ourselves you now in Osaka in person. That was really very fascinating for us, a beautiful experience. Yes, that. <laughs> absolutely, and. Uh, what a gift, like you say, an unexpected uh, result of mm -hmm. COVID is this 
international community building, um, mm-hmm. you know, a build global communication connection. And I think what Robin and I talk about so often with our the benefit and the the really big blessing of our podcast is meeting with all the different people mm-hmm. from around the world, all different lineages, all different ways of practicing different tools and techniques and even different ideas about Reiki and the history of it. And we all share in common Mm -hmm. that piece of that inner, inner truth and awareness and sharing and Mm -hmm. community and Mm -hmm. unity and the commonalities that we all share. I, I see in, in my my engagement with the Reiki community globally, we we are just a really loving group of people who are in support of one another and the growth of Reiki in the world um, so that it can support more people and help with that that big light shining within <laughs> from it. And so some of the the differences in the ways of our practices and the the tools is as you say and Doi Sensei says the tools that we have and the ways that we use them. The commonality is that we care deeply about contributing wellness here in the world and on the planet and for all life here mm-hmm. um, and the success of of the Earth itself. And uh, right now, currently, of course, we're here at this time. And I do, you know, we always think in terms of thanking the teachers who came before us. Mm. And I also think in terms of we are the teachers who Mm. are coming before the descendants. Yeah. And even though I, I know this is for me, it's also a personal journey. I do have to say I'm I care deeply mm-hmm. about that part. And that's what I also see around the world. It's like you even say with Doi Sensei that wanting to be, you know, in the equal and horizontal mm-hmm. rather than there's one authority and we all look to them to tell us what is true. Mm-hmm. And what we see across this community is the same idea of inner truth and find find it within you. Really? No, really. Um, Usui Reiki also uh, was born in a very hard and dark time of Japan. No, that kind of things always uh, um, is like, um, uh, how do you say, um, uh, thanks to those hardship, you no, know, uh, we human beings always uh, uh, look for something, you no, know, something more, and uh, uh, so I, I when I talk about uh, back history, background of uh, context, not history, historical context of uh, Reiki. No, um, I talk about two historical moments of Japan. Is is the time of Sui Sensei when he was born, Meiji era, and also when Reiki was born was Taisho era. No, uh, these times were when uh, you know, uh, Japan started to open to the rest of the world and developed as Westernized country. Uh, that was hard very hard you no know, uh, for people you know, and uh, many problems wars too wars with other countries that never happened in the history of japan happened too so that was very hard and um, so in in this kind of moment japan was also like uh, other countries also were very poor so that's why you no know, appearance of takata says they had to immigrate to hawaii as many japanese people did so very h- a hard time uh, in that sense too. So people needed something. People needed spiritual orientation. People needed uh, something, some tools to heal themselves. Not because 
then they died just because they didn't have money to go to a doctor to buy medicine. You know? So it became like a big boom you know? in that time of Swiss and state, um, big spiritual movement, and also at the same time, big uh, many types of um, therapies, you no know, cures, you no know, all types uh, were created uh, at that time. You know? And uh, Usui Sensei started uh, Usui Reiki Ryoho just in that time too, because he thought this could this could help. You Not. Know? Uh, uh, Japanese people of this moment, they need this because they needed um, well-being, not inner well-being, and also uh, they needed to, uh, they need also health, no? Uh, they needed some kind of cure, no? So, um, Usui Reiki had two things, no? Is Usui Reiki, you can learn to heal yourself, cure yourself, and also you can also develop yourself as a person. So it had two aspects that were separated in uh, that time. No, uh, There were people, spiritual masters, who dedicated to spiritual teaching. And of course, they had maybe some kind of healing methods also, but there were many therapists at the same time. But uh, people who got attracted to Suwaki so two things, both things, in Usui Reiki, in just in one uh, teaching, they found two things, no? uh, the spiritual part and also uh, what is a he healing part. No? So, but there's another moment of uh, Japan also had a very hard time is post-World War II. And also uh, we even uh, received a bigger Western influence in that time during decades you no know? and that's why um usui reiki ryoho gakkai had to become very discreet you no know? not to stand out because uh it's we uh, i never feel like japanese people are criticizing this, but uh, we know that um, 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 American no, uh, army, American occupation, no, occupation army uh, controlled a lot what is a Japanese culture, no, during uh, seven years of stay there, and they they eliminated no, many Japanese old culture, tradition, old thinking, as being dangerous, uh, as nationalistic, uh, how do you say, belief or thinking that uh, uh, they felt like a danger for other Western countries because that made Japan strong. No? So they were all eliminated. And of course, something like Reiki. <laughs> yes. So uh, they didn't eliminate Reiki. I think uh, as Reiki in Usui Reiki Yoho Gakkai, um, the president, if you see uh, the list of presidents, uh, they were uh, uh, naval people, <laughs> very important high rank officials. That means, well, <laughs> that is uh, after uh, Japan lost war, they were. Uh, bad guys, just bad guys uh, for Americans, uh, criminals. So, so that's why I'm doing, I'm saying something maybe I shouldn't say, but <laughs> so maybe that is, this is just my opinion. One of the reasons that the Sireki Yoho Gakkai had to be, become very, very discreet, you no, know, and not to even mention the word Reiki. Yes, and they continued, but uh, very, very uh, in an invisible way, no. Um, so, but that, that, you know, but that is what happened in general with all types of Japanese traditions. All that seemed superstitious, all that type of therapies disappeared too. The old therapies and things like that uh, disappeared. No, only Usui Reiki survived, I think, from the time of Usui Sensei. I, uh, maybe some other could have survived that I don't know, 
But there are many, many techniques. Uh, many masters uh, used to use energy with psychic power, not like the Swiss sensei, no, with psychic power, very big, no psychic power. Uh, but um, I think nobody survived, or maybe a few masters survived from then. The only Usui Reiki uh, really survived and continues today. So that is uh, one of the points no, that uh, is interesting for me. No? So, yeah. I think that's also an, uh, just an honest um, understanding of mm -hmm. the history and the cultural history with it too. Mm -hmm. And for the Japanese people, and as we are, you know, as you say, the, the Japanese people loving the traditions of, of the West and coming back to their own traditions here in the West. We love the traditions of the mm -hmm. Japanese people and are looking for those in our own lives as well. I know when I go to Japan, I, I just, I so love the country and the people and it, it's it, it's such a um just a, a a place really unlike anywhere and i know for myself getting to go and spend time there and just be with the people and because i don't speak the language i'm i'm really often just in the energy of it and of course then often really getting to spend weeks on Mount Karama. Mm. I always come home with a new level of inner peace. Wow. wow. Always come home with, mm -hmm. it's a, like this elevated um, peace and energy and self-understanding. And it's, it's um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things like, you know, we all know you have to also have your own personal experience of it, but it's yeah. it's tangible. Yes, no, oh, really. You said unique, and I, I, I'm not a nationalistic person, but I been living abroad for a long time, and sometimes also rejecting and denying my own culture and tradition. Mm -hmm. But now. I really think, yes, Japan is very unique. We have to value it and you have to uh, recover again, you know, all that positive thing that we all always had. And, uh, um, and I'm so grateful that um, many people of the world, you know, uh, are starting to um, travel to Japan and loving Japan. <laughs> Yes, um, because uh, independent of what is happening, you know, and up there in some way <laughs> with uh, powerful people, uh, people in general, just uh, plain people as as us, you know, um, we feel globally, you know, each time as in Reiki community as one, you know, mm -hmm. and... Uh, um, but Japan is a very unique place where uh, for a very important you no know, people uh, is certain way uh, when a uh, 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 country is like Japan um, they feel like a certain danger you know, to control. Uh, no, the difficulty of controlling uh, uh, people like Japanese people. So, uh, no, so they tried everything to to be able to have no Japan under their control. No, but uh, independent of that, that is that <laughs> that always happened everywhere right. in the world. Right. Uh, in the history of humanity, always happened and everywhere in the world. Um, people, you know, many people. Uh, from many countries, uh, also uh, the influences of, of manga and anime, also. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, many young 
people like 30 years old, 40 years old, they just love Japanese culture, you know, and that is, uh, they are from everywhere of the world. And uh, that is what matters really. You know, in, and that is what uh, make you know, everybody feel as one, you not know, like something common. Now that we love, and also people go to Japan now seeking for something, not seeking a touristic experience. Of course, they do tourism, but they go to Japan and they comment, they feel like they were touched by something yeah. in the inside. You know? It's like uh, recently, one of my students told me her aunt went to Japan and she's just a normal person, she doesn't believe in Reiki, she puts in anything, but uh, this aunt told her that she felt touched by something, and my student said, my aunt came very different this time from Japan. <laughs> it's like, yes, of course, Japan has that vibration, that energy. It's, it's everywhere, it's everywhere. It's, uh, when it's vibration, it's energy, that is so, uh, how do you say, uh, harmonizing no? or, or vibrating high. It just touches you and it transforms, transforms you, you know? without understanding why or without uh, mental analysis, something just touches you, like Reiki. Reiki <laughs> touches us. You know? So Japan has a very good climate. In general, of course, Japan has very negative things too, of course, yes. But uh, to the, where people not can feel not that uh, connection, very connection, and uh, uh, no, I don't know. So, so I'm I'm very happy you know, about all this that is happening now, even though the things are getting harder and harder <laughs> globally, you know. But independent of that, um, inside of us, no, uh, of many people, no, uh, normal people like us, um, there's something I think uh, starting to uh, happen. Uh, but it's really thanks to the hardship, like uh, COVID crisis. Mm -hmm. No, we are each time united as one. So. <laughs> Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to express all this. Um, so, no, really, I'm very, very grateful to two of you. Thank you very much. Oh, Rika, thank you so much. And is there anything about um, what you offer for Reiki classes or your book or anything you'd like to share with everybody so they yeah, know how um, to find you uh, and... Yes, uh, thank you. Ah, yes, I, there's a very important thing that I have to share. Uh, of course, I'm, um, I'm correcting this book a little bit because yeah. this is my first experience and uh, <laughs> I realized some mistakes. And so I'm correcting them. And also, um, uh, of course, I will keep on publishing more books, but of Doi Sensei, no, I, I still don't feel like I want to write a book, I just want to translate, no, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm doing that, and also there's one important thing, because Colleen went to the first day of centenary celebration, but she couldn't uh, attend uh, the second day and third day. Now, there were conferences you know, by international masters and also uh, a doctor like Dr. Feldman and also nurse like no, uh, Deborah Linda and also Japanese nurse Buminaka, they give very, very, very good uh, report. And they informed us of their clinical, uh, how do you say, um, test, uh, no, uh, the clinical studies and everything. And that is very, very important, I think, for Reiki people you know, to, to know, you know there is a very big space for Reiki also in the medical world too. 
And also, uh, there were Japanese Noriki masters there sharing their speech. And also, uh, German master Olaf Bohm, we call him <laughs> magnet, uh, which attracts um, important uh, old documents of Reiki, and also people who are key to uh, traditional Reiki, he's just like a magnet. <laughs> so he attracts them. He travels to Japan a lot. He just attracts them. So he gave us a very good conference with, uh, um, with uh, some documents, old documents that was never being published that was uh, before. So um, the association where I, which I belong to is um, uh, Madrid. Uh, it's in Madrid. It's a uh, Gender Reiki Association from Madrid. Uh, I'm going to, uh, um, how do you say, um, we, we edited uh, all the videos, the conferences. We put the subtitles in Spanish, English, and Japanese, and all professionally done. And we are going to launch it. Is very soon you will see it in Facebook. It, there is a Facebook called Usui Reiki 2022. Usui Reiki 2022. It's a Facebook page we used for the event, the centenary event. And uh, you can rent them for a very, very low price. We just want to uh, expand them. We just want many people to see them because they are very useful material. So, uh, yes, I wanted to uh, talk about that definitely. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that Facebook page is Sui Reiki 2022 is where people can find the videos from the conference. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. It's easy to find. So yeah. Yes. Are have they launched? Are they already available? Or it's about Not to launch? Yet. Uh, we're trying to finish our work this week. So we'll be like oh. next week. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, that <laughs> will have launched by the time we air this. Yeah. So it's probably oh, great. this is going great. to let me just double check. We will be airing this on like March 25th. So they for sure will be launched by That'd now by the time people are listening to this recording. So yes. go to Yasui Reiki 2022 to find those videos <laughs> on Facebook, yes. on Facebook. No, really, really very important, uh, very historical uh, oh. conferences. And also the, the inauguration, the opening ceremony that you went to Colleen. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, you can see it free. Um, everybody can uh, see this uh, uh, video of opening ceremony free, uh, free of charge. Yes, uh -huh. it was beautiful too. Yes, so yeah, very beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. I'm so I, excited that you guys are doing this. I can't. Yes. I'm yeah. Just like, wow. Good. We get to watch good. these videos. I just yes. want to say really quick to the listeners. We'll put that in the show notes mm -hmm. as well, the description, so that you can just go and find the link there. Yes, yes. We're we a very small association and we are all volunteers here. Only 100 people belong to this association. But uh, I think uh, our love towards Reiki is so strong <laughs> that uh, so uh, we could accomplish all this. So as to myself, I'm taking a little bit of break <laughs> because it has been a very hard work. Uh, like seven Seven years we were working on that, no, six years we were working on that. And meanwhile, we had COVID crisis too, but we kept on working. So it has been very hard for me and all the, the organizing committee. So I'm taking a little bit of break. I'm going very little by little in my work. So, but if you visit my Facebook page or something, maybe soon you, I will be more active too. So thank you very much. <laughs> I understand that. And the book is titled Gendai Reiki Ho, The Spirit of Yusui Sensei and the Truth About Traditional Reiki. And so we will also make sure we announce when uh, that that is uh, written in J Japanese translated into Spanish, and now um, Rika is also translating it into English, 
And so it will be available on Amazon and I'm sure other um, independent bookstores as well. So we'll make sure we also announce that when when it's ready to be published again, um, because we all can't wait for it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Doi Sensei also wrote another book called mm -hmm. A Modern Reiki Method for Healing, which I mm -hmm. also highly recommend that takes us even you know deeper into the history as well. Mm -hmm. So um yeah. No, Rika, really. thank you so much mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. all that you do and are and again, you know, with your website um is uh reiki dash japones or japones in um in english but reiki dash j a p o n e s dot com and then her facebook page is rika sarohashi rika dot sarohashi and instagram is sarohashi rika Mm -hmm. um so thank you so much you. um with everything and of course anybody if you uh, it'll be in the show notes but also if you, you can always email us if you need us to give you our her contact information oh rika awesome. wow thank you so um, much this was amazing thank you <laughs> mm -hmm. really fun and for all of our listeners out there just thank you for Again, all of us being in community together and just contributing to this wellness, spreading it in the world, sharing these tools and the energies that we have to thrive and live lives of wellness and mind management. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank everyone. you very much.